As a lot of you guys know, Volkswagen gave us this 2018 all track for a long term tester. So I felt it was pretty fitting to take it down to watch the Volkswagen IDR Pikes Peak do its runs during the race. So despite the fact that I've lived in Colorado for four years, I've never actually been to Pikes Peak for the race. I got to go two weeks ago to watch some practicing, but that was actually the first time I've even been to Colorado Springs. So while I'm there, I'm gonna try and do all the things that a first timer should do at Pikes Peak. Just go ahead and pull it up. Yep. <laughs> Visually, it's a difficult race for the drivers. There are guardrails up now. There are um, visual cues now that didn't used to be up. Uh, but you, you, the spectators on the day change the entire way the track looks. And then you get to this point where we're at Devil's Playground right now. And here and beyond, the visual cues go away. It's, you're on the moon. There's no trees, there's no spectators. It's, yeah, there's just no life up here. And um, everything is a blind corner. So it's very, very difficult to learn the track. And uh, so memorization is an absolute key in Pike Speed. <laughs> Oh man, 14,000 feet, we're here. We made it to the top of Pikes Peak. Yesterday was a day full of testing for Volkswagen, which meant we got to watch a lot of cool race cars driving on the mountain. And tomorrow is race day, starting at eight in the morning. So today we're gonna go tour some museums. Hey, say hi. Hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Volkswagen has brought us here to the Penrose Heritage Museum to check out a whole bunch of cool cars from the Penrose collection, which basically documents the progression of Pike's Peak cars from the first race in 1916 all the way up to modern cars like today. So I think the best thing about Pikes Peak as a fan, as a spectator, is just how involved you can be as a member of the general public. Uh, all the cars are behind me and off up in this parking lot back here. They're out in the open preparing for the race. The drivers are here. You can talk to them, say hi to them, take pictures with them. Uh, it's really cool. I think this is one of the few races where you're genuinely able to get super close to the cars and super close to the drivers. Uh, for that reason, I think Pikes Peak is a really spectacular race and something you should really come down and try and see if you have the opportunity. It's super fun to be here. Yeah, I mean, there's kind of three main 
sectors, right? There's the bottom where you're going through the trees, flowing corners, even a little bit of banking to them. Some of them are a little bit uh, deceptive because you'll start to get into a flow at a certain speed and then one will just be a little bit tighter. Um, there's a famous one that I've crashed at and uh, probably 20% or 30% of the people here have crashed at which is called Engineers. It's right after a long straightaway over a crest so it's a little bit blind and then it has a sharp left um, after that. But once you kind of survive some of those flowy corners through the woods, you come through Glen Cove, which if you've been up the mountain, you know that's where they do the brake check on the way down. Yep. Um, then you go into George's Corner and that kind of kicks off uh, the second sector, which is really um, the W's. And uh, they're called that because it looks like a W up on the mountain. There's some long legs to them, there's some short legs, you just have to memorize the sequence. But they're very, very sharp corners. Ragged Edge has 12 or 1300 feet dropping off the right side with nothing to hit until the bottom. Um, then once you clear the W's go into a third sector which is unlike the rest of the course again uh, which is very high speed, very flat, even off camber corners, blind corners um, really separates you know the competitors that are really pushing to the ones that okay I just need to finish this thing now um, because these corners uh, if you have a downforce car you really have to push to get the speed up enough to use the downforce um, and the car's starving at that point if you have a combustion engine car and even an electric car after the W's you have to check temperatures make sure there aren't warning lights on and uh, then you have the potential for a lot of weather up there and then then you're to the finish and you're freezing actually until you're led, uh, led to come down the mountain at the end of the day. Electric cars don't make a whole lot of noise so I'll just I'll have my own sound effects. All jokes aside, Romain's run was impressive at the very least, and Volkswagen proceeded to celebrate exuberantly. Well, for Volkswagen, the race day is over, and it was very successful. Uh, a 7 minute, 57 second time is mind-blowing. We are really proud, and uh, yeah, you can see everybody having a big smile here. <laughs> first car ever to go under eight minutes and it smashed Sebastian Loeb's record of eight minutes and 13 seconds which I suppose a lot of people suspected was possible but no one really knew what would happen today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's time for me to head back to Boulder. For the Fastlane Car, I'm Michael Curtis. I'll see you guys next time.